Hey scholars, I'd like to uh, go over one of those diffusion questions. This was the one where you were trying to find the molar mass of an unknown gas. You were given the rate of uh, tetrafluoroethylene, um, which I might also call tetrafluoroethene. The YL is more of a common kind of thing that people put in there a lot of times, but it's not necessary for the name. So C2F4, you're given the rate for that as 4.6 times 10 to the negative sixth moles per hour. Um, as long as the units match, you can use any units you want for those rates. You're told that the rate of effusion for the unknown gas is 6.5 times 10 to the negative sixth moles per hour. Um, right off the bat, you have some information that should let you state uh, something qualitative about this unknown gas, uh, which is that the unknown gas is effusing faster than the tetrafluoroethene. And if it's effusing faster, then that gas does have to be lighter than the C2F4. So you've got two rates. You're asked for a molar mass, which means that one of the molar masses is unknown, and you have to find the molar mass of the C2F4. So then you can make a table for the C2F4, and for C2F4 you find 100.02 grams per mole. And so I'm gonna switch over to my work, and what you can see is that that's basically the given information, or enough information from the question that it's effectively given. So again, if you know the formula, if you know the identity of the gas, it really doesn't take that much work to get the molar mass itself. And so remember the starting point for solving any kind of a question where there's an equation is to always write the equation you're going to use. In this case, the rate of A over the rate of B is equal to the square root of the ratio of the molar mass of B over the molar mass of A. Notice that the compounds are on opposite sides of the fraction line when we're on opposite sides of this equation. So if the molar mass of A goes up, if A goes up, then this value goes down, which means that the rate of A compared to B also goes down, which again means that A would be slower, okay? In this case, our unknown x is going to be faster, and just because of algebra, it's typically nice to put unknowns in the numerator rather than the denominator. So if we call B the unknown gas, and we say that the molar mass of B and the rate of B, these are the rates of n molar mass for x, then A would be the C2F4, okay? Um, a lot of times in textbooks, you'll see some sort of a script M representing molar mass. So I've just tried to do that here. I never remember exactly how to draw that. So um, this is what you have then for that equation when you plug in the values. So the 4.6 is our C2F4. That's slower than the 6.5. We have X over 100.02. You should notice before you start here, that both the exponents and the units will cancel, okay? And that this ratio is then considered to be unit less. So we've got a square root here, we've got x, we'd like to get rid of that square root with the x, so we wanna square both sides as our first step. I've gone ahead and simplified the 4.6 over 6.5 and I'm calling that 0.707 with seven, uh, that really got two extra sig figs here. Um, this then is squared when we get rid of the square root because we're squaring both sides. And then this equals x over 100. And I'm just rounding a little bit there to state it, but you don't want to drop the decimal. This is just that rewritten. So whatever 0.7077 squared is, it's almost exactly one half. To solve for the x, then you multiply, multiply both sides by that 100, and you get almost exactly 50 grams per mole. Now, in terms of thinking about significant figures, 
our original rates each only have two significant figures. And so really our 50.09 should be rounded to exactly 50. And again, you would use a decimal or you could express it in scientific notation. Um, with this equation, with Graham's law of E fusion, you are allowed to use any units. Any units are okay in all of this work as long as they match. So as long as you're using the same units for the two rates, those units will cancel and your ratio will be unitless. As long as you're using the same units for the molar or molecular masses, they will cancel and you'll be okay. You can use atomic mass units per molecule. You can use grams per mole. You can use kilograms per mole, okay? All of that is allowed. Um, I do wanna note that our molar mass of C2F4 is 100. We said initially that X was going to be lighter than C2F4. Notice that we did indeed find that X is lighter. This is lighter than the 100, right? The other interesting thing, thing here to take note of is that C2F4 is twice as heavy as this unknown gas. Twice as heavy if you take the square root of two is 1.4. Because C2F4 is twice as heavy, X is actually the square root of two or 1.4 times faster than C2F4. And in fact, if you take that 4.6 for the C2F4 and multiply by 1.4, you get 6.44, which is effectively 6.5, at least with an, with an error from rounding and significant figures. While any units are okay for Graham's law of E fusion, if you are trying to do any of the equations specifically to calculate speeds, let's say, or energy, kinetic energy, um, any of those equations where you have other units in your expression, those units must be in Kelvin, meters, kilograms, and seconds. So our molar mass down here has to be kilograms per mole. If you're using this equation, okay? Um, R with these units has to be this 8.3144, okay? The units all broken down in terms of these SI base units would be kilogram meter squared per second squared Kelvin's mole, okay? or per second squared per Kelvin per mole, depending on how you wanna state that. The nice thing here is that kilogram meter squared per second squared is, are the SI units that make up the joule, and the joules are our unit of energy. So we're seeing here with this constant, this ideal gas constant, we're seeing that this is so much energy per Kelvin per mole, okay, and, um, when you do this and you take the square root, then the units you get for these speeds will always be in meters per second, okay? So Graham's law of E fusion, any units are okay as long as they match for the terms you're trying to express, as long as they're similar enough where the units can cancel. Only when you're trying to do specific things with energy or speeds, do you need to use very specific units, okay? I hope this is helpful. I hope this also helps some of you who had a few mistakes here in your algebra. I saw some uh, interesting methods of dealing with the square root.